responsible for the university's internationalization efforts, including study abroad and global education, cross-cultural and global programming, development and support of international relations and partnerships, and services for visiting students and scholars. He is also a distinguished professor of chemistry and physics. Dr. Garfunkel is a global scholar who has held visiting professorships across the world, including Paris, Berlin, Florence, and Shanghai. He is deeply involved in developing global partnerships and research collaborations with Chinese and African universities, and he has helped lead the international activities of the Materials Research Society for over a decade. Dr. Garfunkel. Okay, it's also my pleasure to, to introduce Hori Tafish. Hori is a Palestinian refugee who was born in 1991 in Lebanon. In 2009, she was awarded a scholarship to study graphic design at the Lebanese International University. In December 2014, Hori arrived in Malta where she co-founded Spark 15, the first refugee-led organization in Europe. Spark 15 advocates, advocates for the rights of young refugees in Malta and worldwide. Hori has participated as a Malta representative in the Global Refugee Youth Consulate and UNHCR annual consultation in Geneva in June 2016 and has attended training as Ambassador of Diversity with Crossing Borders Organization in Denmark. Hori was awarded fellowship in the doctoral program in Global Affairs in Rutgers University, Newark. It is my pleasure to introduce Hari. Uh, thank you very much, Ellen. Jackie and Elizabeth and the rest of you who uh, are organizing this event. Thanks both uh, for organizing and for inviting me and for giving me a few minutes to talk about some of the Rutgers activities. And people engaged in, in the global migration and refugee crisis, uh, especially as they impact women. Um, I am going to... Am I speaking loud enough? Okay, I will speak loud or not into the microphone. Um, uh, again, I, and I've used my cheat sheet, so. uh, I'm Rick Garfunkel, I am Vice President of Global Affairs at Rutgers, and I'm in charge of something called Rutgers Global, it used to be called Gaia, for those of you who've been around for a while. It's the, um, uh, we're the unit uh, tasked with promoting internet nationalization and globalization on campus, as was mentioned. Um, we do study abroad, we deal with 9,000 international students at Rutgers, it's uh, about 9,000 now. Uh, we um, keep uh, those 9,000 in uh, legal compliance and in these times of uh, Mr. Trump and company, that's a little bit of a challenge, as you can imagine. We do academic support for international students. We have uh, about 1,500 international scholars, that's postdocs, visiting scientists, and visiting scholars of all flavors from all around the world, and faculty, incoming faculty, we support them. Um, we do a lot of on-campus uh, cultural events, and Rick Lee in the back corner is in charge of that unit. Uh, we have uh, 400 plus partnerships with units around the, around the world, and then we oversee that unit, actually again, Rick Lee's, and we uh, do seed funding of global projects, some of which actually uh, uh, we hope are in fact in uh, Douglas. So thank you again for the Institute for Women's Leadership and the Rutgers, uh, excuse me, the Douglas Global Village for uh, sponsoring this event. For those of us born in the U.S. like uh, myself, we really need to go back only a generation or two to find someone, one of our ancestors, who was uh, a migrant into the country. Um, and they were displaced for one reason or another. Um, for those of you that don't know or go a little bit further back, you just spit into a little vial, send it off to uh, 23andMe or, or Ancestry.com and you can figure out where you came from and uh, perhaps even how, how, how long back uh, before you, you 
your uh, ancestors were, were migrants themselves. Um, again, happy to see you all here. If you have a, a kind of a, a fraction of a, a heart or a little bit of uh, empathy, you should shudder at the many uh, migration and refugee crises going on around the world right now. It's uh, a large fraction of those are not happening because people really want to move, but because of uh, conflict, extreme poverty, uh, climate change, and, and uh, human-caused climate change, and other reasons people are forced to, to being displaced. The responses to the crises have brought out both some of the best and some of the worst characteristics of people and societies, and I'll spare you a political diatribe on this. My guess is I'm going to be uh, preaching to the choir on, on that if we spoke about that. Anyways, thanks to those of you who are worrying about this and other social justice issues that are challenging us uh, these days. Uh, and thanks uh, also not only to the academics involved in this field, but also to the faith-based communities, maybe some of whom are here today, who have been engaged in this for decades, if not longer. So you know the numbers. It's something like 65 million people right now who are displaced people uh, worldwide. Some fraction, half, uh, a third to a half of those are, might be qualified as what you would call refugees. There's, um, there's, a, there's a linguistic issue between uh, what it means to be a displaced person, or, or a refugee, and a, uh, and, and a migrant. And perhaps our UNHCR speaker will comment on, on some of those kind of issues right now. Uh, anyways, the numbers are daunting, and uh, it's a kind of scary. Um, there are major things happening worldwide in addition to the politics that you see. Uh, there's uh, coming out of the UN, there's two new compacts right now, a compact on refugees and a compact on migrants, which will have a big effect assuming they're passed uh, at the United Nations level and that all countries buy into this new, new policies and new sort of processes going on worldwide. And uh, again, maybe we'll be speaking about that later in the day. As far as what's going on at Rutgers, we have a long history of receiving, hosting, and supporting uh, both uh, people, uh, students from migrant communities, and faculty from migrant communities, as well as refugees. Uh, I don't really know the early history that, that well, but my guess is there's quite a bit. The history is uh, in, in some books about the uh, First and Second World War related to migrants and refugees here. I think there's a, even a much more thorough history on uh, the Hungarian refugees, I think there were 32,000 who came to Camp Kilmer right near here, about a mile or two away from here, many of whom interacted with Rutgers. They came in 1956 and 57. Um, one of them was one of my colleagues, actually, Martha Greenblatt. She's still a professor here in the chemistry department. Um, <clears throat> some of those uh, who came to Rutgers were, or, or nearby were taking classes at Rutgers first often English, but uh, many of the other courses, not just in, uh, uh, in, in social sciences and humanities, but also in, in the sciences. Um, Tracy Voorhees was a Rutgers alum, uh, trustee and board of governors, was actually put in charge by uh, President Eisenhower of receiving the uh, Hungarian refugees. Uh, many others were involved in that. Today we interact quite closely with the uh, IIE group, uh, Institute for International Education in New York, they have a program called the Scholars Refugee Fund, uh, Refugee, I got that right, Scholar Rescue Fund, excuse me, SRF, and we have several re uh, rescue scholars who are refugees from their countries here teaching at Rutgers now, and as with some of the students, they don't always like to advertise that, they don't have a a name tag that says I'm a, I'm a refugee or I'm a scholar, uh, well, a scholar they might, refugee they don't have. Um, uh, some of them uh, do it above the table, some below the table. I believe actually some will be speaking uh, during the day today. Uh, we are also involved in sending students uh, abroad to engage in, in uh, refugee related activities and we have uh, uh, a lecturer who will be speaking uh, this afternoon uh, on, uh, on, um, on a program that she runs in, in Greece for, it's a kind of a, a uh, service learning program where students go over and work with refugees in the refugee camps in the Middle East and will probably be, in, in, in her case, in one of the Greek islands, Leros, will probably be growing those programs. Several faculty members have uh, individual programs and there's quite a few other programs where 
uh, faculty and students who are involved in education overseas, not just in accepting and supporting people here, but in working in, in the com refugee communities and camps abroad. We'll be growing those kinds of programs. Um, what do we have going on at Rutgers? I think uh, an easy way to do it is go to a web page that um, uh, we put up. This is, uh, if you go to rutgers.global.edu, and then in there there's something called initiatives, and underneath one of the initiatives is uh, refugees and migrants. We have uh, actually two initiatives. One is on refugees and migrants, another on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Anyways, on the one on refugees and migrants, which is um, uh, the one I'm showing you right here, it's, uh, we, we, we list, and I'll go through some of these, faculty who were involved in teaching courses and in, in research activities with uh, migrant and refugee communities. Again, domestic as well as abroad. There's a little bit of a focus on things that are happening uh, outside of the US. We talk about service learning programs such as Electros program. We have uh, another part of the web uh, website which talks about events that take place on campus such as this one, which I looked this morning wasn't even listed here, embarrassing. Uh, we have a, a collection of students and alumni activities in the, in the field and then some resources, some important uh, websites that you should link to if you're interested in, in understanding this a little more. Let me talk a little bit uh, briefly about some of the people at Rutgers who are doing things. Uh, at Rutgers, across Rutgers, not just in the New Brunswick campus. At Rutgers Camden, there's uh, Katie Coe, who's a sociology professor from the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, the Department of Sociology and Anthropology and Criminal Justice there. And she's involved in conducting research on ways and ideas uh, that gain currency and how they become routine. She authored a couple of books, one which is called The Scattered Family. It's about parenting African migrants and global inequality. A second book was Everyday Raptures, uh, Ruptures, excuse me, Children, Youth, and Migration from a Global Perspective. Uh, Joanne Gotsman down there is a clinical professor of law, and she directs the Immigrant Justice Clinic. The law school, as you know, is actually joint between Camden and Newark. And this is a actually student-led law office that represents clients on immigration matters. Uh, and associated with that, there's a group that's dealing with uh, DACA students here, uh, here at Rutgers. Uh, she also leads an embedded learning abroad course in Guatemala, and uh, she's involved in other projects in Central America. At Newark, um, quite a few faculty are in involved. Jamie Liu is a professor of sociology, and she examines how uh, ethnic and social networks impact social mobility. Uh, she's worked uh, quite a bit with Asia. Uh, Randy Mandelbaum is a professor at the Rutgers Law School and a founding director of the Child Advocacy Clinic provides representation for undocumented immigrant children and others. And she leads um, with um, Jane Gossman an embedded study abroad program in Guatemala involving uh, um, students. Um, Su Susie Kim is actually a, um, I'm jumping too fast here. Uh, Ariane Chaval, uh, that Poland, I can't even pronounce this, that, and I can speak French. Uh, Apollonia is a professor in the School of Public Affairs and Administration at Rutgers Newark and is conducting research that focuses on politics of immigration and discrimination. She authored a book, uh, How Does It Feel to Be a Threat? And uh, there's a, a guy, Tim Raphael, who's uh, working on, he's a director of the Rutgers Center for Migration in the Global City, and he's a sort of a film and arts person. He's got quite a few clips, and you can go to their website at Newark. Uh, on called the, the Newest Americans, and there's very uh, quite a few very interesting video clips that you might uh, be interested in. And then probably the uh, um, one of the more engaged people is recently is Kyle Farmbury, and he's the dean of the graduate school at Newark. He has launched a multi-pronged uh, investigation of the refugee crisis in Malta, which Coria will speak uh, a little bit about later. He works with NGOs, refugees. Uh, aid groups and uh, government organizations, including all the way up to uh, uh, president of, of a few countries, in dealing with their refugee issues. Uh, Malta has been considered a safe haven with um, at least uh, 10 to 15 refugees per thousand people, many from sub-Saharan Africa, sort of a waypoint uh, as the uh, refugees go up to Europe. Um, 
in New Brunswick, uh, a lot of New Brunswick faculty are involved. Husena Ali Du, she's a professor in Amasal, in, in, uh, she's an African scholar, a sort of a theoretical linguist. She is uh, working recently on the migration across the Sahara Desert from Senegal and Gambia and a few countries across through Mali and then Niger and then up north to Libya and into Europe. And so she's a scholar in that. She's run a conference here on campus about African migration issues. And uh, she is uh, a real um, uh, resource for, for those of you at Rutgers who are interested in the migration crisis, especially as it's uh, involving impacting African uh, people, women and, and uh, children especially. Becky Davis is from uh, the School of Social Work, and she's, um, she's working on, uh, on, on a series of uh, problems involving uh, immigration and refugees coming into the United States. Um, Susie Kim is a professor of Korean history, and she's advocating for human rights and peace in the Korea, and she's uh, very familiar with migration issues in the Korean Peninsula, in and out of Korea, and the post-colonial period in particular in North Korea. Uh, Hyacinth Miller is a professor of uh, uh, Latino and uh, Hispanic Caribbean studies in the School of Arts and Sciences, and she's an instructor in Spanish and Portuguese, again working on um, both here and in, in Newark, and she's working on uh, Caribbean immigrants in the diaspora. Carrie Mott, a geography uh, professor in the School of uh, Arts and Sciences, focuses on political geography, feminist geography, and social justice movements and teaches courses in that and has written extensively about that. And Dr. Verma in Labor Studies and Employment Relations Professor at School of Management and Relations, looks at immigration policy and law. And uh, Sharalta Takash, who is here or not here? Not here yet. Uh, I think she may be coming today. She has uh, been a professor in uh, Modern Greek Studies at Rutgers and um, uh, one of the people, Electra, that uh, she works with in, in uh, Greece, uh, Greek-related uh, refugee problems, a refugee at Greece as a, as, a, as a transit point, and she's been helping us coordinate some of the activities. Um, there's a guy, Jim Neeson, who's a historian at the Rutgers Library who knows a lot about sort of the history of the, of the academic literature on, on refugees and migration, and he's a specialist and he's written some books on, on the Hungarian refugee uh, crisis. So giving students a hands-on understanding of these issues and empowering them uh, is, is really central to what we hope to do by creating this website and, and allowing you to find programs, whether it's activities or clubs or classes or professors doing research, is uh, something that we thought would be a useful, a useful task. My apologies to those of you that I didn't mention who are quite engaged or are not yet listed, certainly not listed much in, in my presentation, but on our website. The website is still a beta website, so if you have any additional information or any events, send it to me or better yet, Rick Lee or Carissa Sestito in our office and we'll get it posted soon. Um, specific issues regarding uh, women and refugees, well, Women and children certainly make up more than half of the uh, refugee, displaced people's population worldwide. So it's obviously important. And, and understanding that within the context of, of, of research that 